Steve Gubber, you're back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Football's almost here. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. How are you doing, Jared? I'm, yeah, I, what you said. I'll just, <laughs> just like what you said, copy paste. Uh, Kyle, we're doing a uh, Big Ten preview. Uh, so what we're doing today is one, we're gonna work through uh, some information from the uh, guys over at Pick Six Preview. We have uh, bought their preview guide. So um, quite frankly, I think it's I think it's the best. Uh, that that's my favorite. Uh, again, that's a Pick Six Previews. Uh, always be plugging the people who are giving us content. So uh, yeah, Pick Six Previews. Uh, so we'll be uh, reacting to some of their predictions. And then, Kyle, I think we also got a bunch of Ask Sloopcast questions about the Big Ten season coming up. So Jared always singing his ABV, ABPs. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm plugging other people's shit right now. Um, but yeah, so Kyle, let's... Uh, you want to start with the Pick 6 preview or do you want to start with the questions? Uh, let's let's go with the pick six. Let's go with the pick six, and then we'll we'll do the s we'll do the questions at the end here, as All well. All right. Um, first and foremost, they are predicting a Big Ten championship game of Wisconsin and Ohio State. Thoughts? No surprise. Yeah, it feels <laughs> it, it does kind of feel like the standard answer. Um. Even though with even though neither of these teams are in the Big Ten championship game last year, I think that's where we should start off with with uh, Wisconsin here. It, we um, I'm pulling up Wisconsin's uh, schedule here. Their schedule is a big piece here. Uh, let's see. Yep, look, looking at their their schedule here. I think I think we talked about it uh, recently. Very. Very easy, easy, easy uh, out of conference schedule. And we kind of ripped Wisconsin for that. Your toughest yeah. game is Washington State, not, not even Washington State, maybe New Mexico State. <laughs> God, that I hate that that's not a clear answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I hate that, that I but, couldn't agree or disagree with that. Mm -hmm. But they but they do pull Ohio state at Ohio state and at Michigan state as their cross conference, cross conference matchup. Yeah. Which is tough. That's, that's, that's a tough and both away games too. I, but do, I, I do think Wisconsin ends up going to the big 10 championship game, but I, I, th I think it's going to be similar to like what we saw last year where your champion, and the Big Ten West is going to have like four losses, <laughs> going four three losses perhaps. Four going into that, that's what it was last year. You had one two. I three. know, but you had, you had four teams who went who had four losses or three losses. I I can't remember exactly how it was, but either way, three three losses, um, maybe four losses. Post post games is confusing. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Spike says I'm as, not a as, fan as of camping. playing Wisconsin twice in the same season. I do think that's the most likely scenario. To be fair, and I yeah. and I, I share your concerns with that. Um, it's it's always tough playing a team twice. Um, I don't think like Wisconsin, Wisconsin. I don't think Wisconsin is the best team in the West. Um. You with us, Kyle? You kind of froze for a second. Let's hope those yeah, thunderstorms hold off. All right. I'm good. Um, I, I don't think the Wisconsin's the best team in the West. I think that they just have, like, the best schedule situation. Um, I quite frankly think Iowa's the best team in the West. Um, I just think that their schedule kind of sucks. And that that's probably going to keep them out of the championship game. Um. I, and by the way, I love I love the guys at Pick Six Previews. All the love in the world. I again, I love their guide. They have Wisconsin one, which is I agree with. But Kyle, they have Nebraska at number two. Ooh, 
Ooh, I don't, I don't not, know about that. No. I, I don't know about that. You got a team who was three and nine last year, three and nine last year, and they, the best three and nine team to ever exist, though. That is true. This is true, Jared. It's, <laughs> it is true. This is um, true. <laughs> no one ever got so much credit for three and nine. Every single loss except Ohio State was by a single score. Mm-hmm. Every yep. single loss except Ohio State, which, by the way, was that 11 points, Kyle? If I'm remembering uh, correctly. No, it was nine. Nine points? Nine points. Nine points. Uh, every single nine points was their lo- their their biggest loss of the season. Yeah, so here, here eight point eight point seven three three seven five nine to Ohio State seven and seven. It's man, there's like there's no better diff- definition of being close. <laughs> I it's weird because Frost came into that came into last season on the hot seat. Frost on the hot seat. That'll never not be funny to me. Frost came into the season on the hot seat and didn't get fired after going three and nine, if that tells you anything. But to say that they make the leap from three and nine to second place in the Big Ten West, that's that feels like a lot to me. They have Iowa and Minnesota tied at number three. And quite frankly, like just, just move Nebraska, have Iowa and Minnesota tied at two and then slot Nebraska down at number four or yeah. Yeah. Number four. Um, that's, I think then they have Purdue, Illinois, Northwestern at five, six, and seven. I would swap Northwestern and Illinois personally, but I'm not going to, let's not spend podcast real estate debating that. <laughs> yeah. Cause who cares? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I'm just trying to move things around here so I can keep up with you, Jared here. Yeah. Wisconsin one. I agree. Nebraska, eh, maybe not. I'd, I'd probably had Iowa as a probably clear number two, potentially, Maybe they're beating Wisconsin as um, as the number one spot there, but yeah, I think I think Nebraska. This is this is going to be a yeah. Th- this is going to be a make or break for for Frost here. How many he's been here for four five years now? I, I've, I've I've lost track how long he's been at Nebraska, and he hasn't he hasn't had a winning season there yet. Am, am I am I wrong to say that? I don't think it. I don't think he's had a winning season yet. Ah. Uh... At I Nebraska, think so I think. Do you think he's I mean, gone five hundred? If I, I don't know, don't again. When, I don't, when, don't, when, don't spend don't spend podcast real estate thinking about it too much. When when is Nebraska going to have? When are when are they going to be? When's enough? When when is enough for for Nebraska? I mean, Frost? I don't care if if Nebraska loses every game by one this year. He can't go three and nine again. <laughs> like, again, it's the greatest three and nine team ever. The greatest three and nine team ever. But they're still three and nine. Like results are results are results are results. Yeah. But I, they do have a much favorable schedule. This year not sure if you dump a national championship winning head coach that quickly. That is such a troll statement that I love it. Uh, much, much better schedule this year compared to last year. Where if you remember like their last games here, Michigan, Minnesota, Purdue, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Iowa. That's tough. <laughs> that's a, that's a rough rough way to end your your season here while this year for nebraska uh as i uh pulling forward here uh they start the season northwestern north dakota georgia southern easily three no these easily going three no going into playing home against oklahoma which (laughs) there's a lot Uh, we did our publicity there i'm just we we did our like record yeah. predictions last week. So let's not dive too deep into the schedules. If you guys want to hear us do that, we literally did it last week. 
Um, yeah, but but over but overall, I I think they'll do better than three wins <laughs> this year. But as far as <laughs> getting the second place, six, second in the yeah, conference in the some, West, no, no, somewhere in between, better than three and nine, worse than second place. <laughs> I don't feel like that's a I don't feel like that's a bold statement at all. Like if this was Tony and Tom doing a bold statement segment, you'd have to call me out on that one. <laughs> all right. Uh, so they, they have also Purdue fifth, Illinois sixth, Northwestern seventh. Yeah, I said that. I, and then I I don't I don't disagree with that either. I I, I would dis- I would swap Illinois Northwestern, but let's again let's not debate. Let's not spend time worrying about that. On the east, they have we already said Ohio State one, um, Michigan two. Penn State three, Michigan State four, Maryland five, Indiana six, Rutgers seven. I have all sorts of issues with this. Yes, I do too, Jared. I have all sorts of issues. I I don't think Michigan's going to be number two this year. Uh, I think they have a coaching disaster in place. They lost both their coordinators. I they don't. I, I think they went as little effort as possible filling said coaching vacancies. Um, I, they lost most of their talent from last year. If you think Michigan's going to be back at the level that they were last year with new coaches, a uh, head coach who publicly tried to leave publicly did everything he could to find any NFL team that would be willing to take him. Again, his coordinator is just ditching him because wouldn't you? And again, with a completely no frills, no excitement, bare bones coaching decisions to fill the raw to kill the fill their coaching positions afterwards. I and again, a severe loss of talent, a severe loss of talent in with like defensive difference makers. Um, Michigan's not going to be number two this year. Mm. Um, yep. Penn State, I think, is the default number two. Not because I think Penn State's going to be all that good this year. I don't. I think it's going to be a down year for the Big Ten East, except for Ohio State. I, and we mentioned, this is not. We this, this is not going to be the Big Ten East of the past couple of years. This is. This is going to be a down Big Ten East this year. We mentioned. We mentioned this once before, but I think the. The big outlier or the big question mark is, is Sparty. Could Sparty be potentially that number <laughs> two, maybe? <laughs> Check the Discord. Uh, Ohio State, separation, Sparty. Yeah. Big separation, the rest. I mean, maybe, maybe Sparty. I mean, I would I would say question. Sparty slash Penn State. It's the big question mark. We We just don't know. We, we just don't know. Maybe they'll be really good. And then to be that clear number two, but it's, we just don't said, know. We just don't know. And it, and we're not going to know really, honestly, we may not know who Sparty is until Sparty plays Ohio state. I think that's honestly. a fair statement. I think that's a very fair statement, but uh, gangland says Sean Clifford in year five or six or whatever the fuck um, is not going to be it. Yeah, I know, but the bar is not that high. Yep. The, the bar to get second place in the big 10 East this year is not that high. Uh, this is one of the first years. Like, obviously if we say Ohio state and Iowa or Ohio state and Wisconsin are the best two teams in the big tens, respective divisions. And then like, just sort of take those guys off the top. And then after that, compare the other six teams or the other 12 teams in the big 10, the big 10 West for the first time in a long time is the better division. The only difference being that Ohio state's in the East, the big 10 West is a much better division this year. With the exception of Ohio State, uh, because obviously, because obviously, but the Big Ten West is much, much deeper. Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, not Nebraska. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, guys, at pick six. I can't I can't get behind this Nebraska love. Mm-mm. Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, 
e- any of those teams would finish second in the Big Ten East this year. Kyle? Yes? No? Agree? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just still trying to wrap my head about trying to predict Sparty, on, honestly, yeah. because, I mean... Sparty actually I, I, might be good. I, Sparty actually I, I, I might like, be pretty good, but I just I like don't Mel know. Tucker. I like Mel Tucker as a coach yeah. here. I mean, it was it was rough. I mean, the, the pandemic year, he had two wins and uh, five losses. Not not a not a good way to start your career as a head coach at all. I I, I give him grace. The pandemic year doesn't count yes. unless you're Ohio State beating Clemson, in which case it fucking counted. <laughs> uh and then and then and then your first full season, you lose twice. You only lose twice. And um and that's against Ohio State and Purdue. You beat you beat you beat your little brother. That's that's a good that's a that's a good rebound. That's a good yeah. rebound. Yeah, I I I Kyle, I'll go ahead and say it. Michigan State, I think, could easily be the second best team in the Big Ten East this year, but they also could be the fourth. Like I just I I've said it a thousand times on this show. If you've been watching us this offseason, you're tired of hearing I just don't know who Michigan State is. But yeah, Kyle's right. I like Mel Tucker. I like Mel Tucker a lot. But I just mm-hmm. I just don't know who this team is right now. Yep, yep. Um, all right, so that's the top four there. Uh, and then they have Maryland, Indiana, Rutgers as the, the bottom three in that order. Reverse it. Re- reverse it. Yeah, exactly. Rutgers, five. Indiana, six. Maryland, seventh. Yeah. Uh, once again... Zero offense. Love you guys over pick six, but I have notes about the big 10 East rankings. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Nebraska. I, I, I have, I have no faith in um, currently right now. I have no faith in, in Maryland this year. I, I think, I think Rutgers is on the, um, is on the rise in terms of um, Rutgers. I yeah. really, really like where um, that program's heading. And I think, I think they'll do, I think they'll do much better than they did uh, last year, which I'm trying to pull up their schedule here, what they did. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, they, I mean, they won the games they should have. They should have. Indiana, Illinois, uh, Delaware, uh, Syracuse and Temple. And um, yeah, I they, they did what they were supposed to do last year. And if they can get that fifth, maybe sixth win this year. Yeah. That's that puts them right there at that fifth, um, fifth ranking or fifth spot in the East. Delaware indeed gangland. All right, Kyle. Um, <laughs> well, it, it's you, not, it's not much, it's not much better as they play Wagner this year. All right. Pick six preview. First team, all Americans. CJ Stroud, number one. If anybody has anything else different, you are wrong. Are wrong. The second team quarterback is Aiden O'Connell at Purdue. To tell you what that gap is, Ugh. that's the gap between one and two. I'm in. If you're if if if, if anyone at Purdue or uh, uh, of the O'Connell family are watching, I apologize. But goddamn, that's a huge gap. That's a, a canyon, canyon, not a gap. Thank you, Spikes. <laughs> Aiden, O'Con- uh, Aiden O'Connell told me he was going to beat Ohio State in 2018. Cool. Um, <laughs> Ibrahim. Ibrahim gets a, they 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 list the running they list two running backs and they list Ibrahim over Henderson. I does that mean? He's one A and Henderson's one B. Yep. I, I I I love I love Ibrahim, but no. Especially coming off of an injury, no. You would do the same, to be honest. No, not coming off of an injury. You come. You're never. You're never the same because it was a it was a knee ligament tear, right? It was his ACL or one of the CLs. Um, you're not the same year one after. 
You're just not. It, it takes it takes two years. I think it was just an ankle thing, was it? Spikes Spikes gave me a yeah. Uh, I, an entire season for an ankle thing that doesn't make sense to me. I think he tore an, a knee ligament. Um, and again, you're just that takes two years. One year to come back and start again. Two years to get back to your actual playing shape. Henderson's the best running back in the Big Ten, and I will not be hearing any arguments otherwise. And I love Ibrahim. I do. And Minnesota is going to be so much better for having him, even if they're having him at 80%. Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of love going on recently with uh, Braylon Allen over at Wisconsin. And I, I can see it. I sure. can see it, but I... And behind a Wisconsin but, offensive line, absolutely. It was mm, an Achilles yeah. rupture. That's... Just as bad, if not the same, as a knee ligament. Yeah, that's that's the uh, same. That does not that's not a one year injury, or worse. I, I think, quite frankly, yeah, I, or worse. I think this year, I think the Big Ten has really good running backs. This year, yeah. running back wise, the Big Ten has some really good, um, good players. But yeah, I think, yeah, I I, I would agree. I think I think Travion would is the number one running back in the, in the big 10. Now, if, if it's the same, if it's the same Ibrahim that we've seen him in the first three quarters against Ohio state. Sure. Then, yes. Yes. I, I would, or even would 2020 what, what, Ibrahim. Yeah. I, I would, That's I, would a conversation. Support, I would support pick six's decision to have an Ibrahim over Henderson as your, as your number one running back. But you have to, you have to take in consideration of, Injuries and all that too, and I'd put Henderson as the preseason favorite. Um, the, number one wide, wide receiver, re JSN. Really not bad considering he was third. He was on the third team, third team in the in the, in the postseason. And, and it's so, it's so funny because he had the most receptions and the most yards. <laughs> For the Buckeyes that year. <laughs> and the Big Ten media put him on the third team of the of the of the all Big Ten team. By the way, I literally just found out why that happened yesterday. Or maybe Friday, I forget. Oh uh, yeah. Uh thank God for Tony and Tom. Uh it was Tony that said it, but it was, you know, it's it's just Tony and Tom at this point, right? Yep. Apparently the 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 Big Ten website wasn't posting his stats until like December something of last year. What the hell are you doing over there, Big Ten? That that's that's why he got third team. What are you doing over there? What are you doing? Because the Big Ten right. doesn't know how to computer. All right. So the other first team players here is Jaden. Well, they just go by Nick stats Z spikes. If you want any evidence that it's all bullshit and they just go by stats. There you go. Yeah. Fire Kevin Warren. Indeed. I know Kevin Warren's on like a comeback tour, but I'm not buying it. Fuck Kevin Warren. Yep. Aren't they all exactly. journalists? Exactly. Yeah. But they, that they, they cover, they're busy covering their own team. Uh, so the other don't the ever other don't receiver, ever say that name ever again. The the, the, the yeah, wide receiver ahead. the wide receivers also that pick six has for first team is a uh, Jaden Reed over at Michigan State and uh, Raheem Jarrett over at Maryland. That that's, that's a name every that's a name everybody has to uh, recognize to even even with a not so stellar quarterback that Maryland has and us predicting Maryland to be the bottom of the big 10 East. Yeah. Rakeem Jarrett is the real deal. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree with that top three. Um, Marvin Harrison jr. Will be on the first team for the postseason, but he's started one game. It's probably just not right to put him on the first team. Like I get that. And, and they, and they did include what? him on the second team. Um, yes. along with Parker Washington at Penn state and Ronnie bell, who are very good. Um, yep. I can't disagree with that. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be in the first team at the end of the year. But you just, again, he started one game. Was he spectacular in that game? Oh, God, was he ever. But 
it, you he started one game. You can't put him in the first team with when you have better options, when you have good options mm-hmm. in Reed and Jarrett. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, tight end here, uh, Sam Laporta over at Iowa. And what? the second team is Eric All over at Michigan. Yeah. In are Iowa, you shitting? Iowa are Canada. you shitting me? An uh, Iowa tight end in the first team? No. Nah. Nah. Never. I, I refuse. All right. All right. So the uh, offensively, uh, the five offensive linemen for first team, we got Peter, uh, Gornowski over at Northwestern. Skoronowski. Uh, Paris John. I uh, you got you got to give me the Polish names. I'm I'm from Eastern Ohio. I'm I'm from the the greater Pittsburgh Skoronowski. area. You have to give me the Skoronowski. Yeah, you have to give me the Polish names. Skoronowski. I was close. I was close. You were you. Uh, yeah, Paris. you just needed an extra syllable and to hit that O a little bit uh, harder. Uh, Paris Johnson, Dwight, oh Dwight, Dewan Jones. There you uh, go. And then. With, uh, over both of them, Ohio State. And then the last two from Michigan, Ryan Hayes and Zach Zinter. Um, I, uh, John Michael Schmitz I from, question. John Michael Schmitz from, from Minnesota should be in the first team. That, I would probably drop Zinter and put John Michael Schmitz in the first team. I think he's tremendous. I think he's great. I think he should be in the first team. I agree. Yep. Uh, no other, no other Ohio state offensive lineman in the second team there, but yeah, I, I, I agree. Johnson, um, Jones and Johnson first team, no questions. Now I have questions about the defense here. Okay. <laughs> I have questions about the defense. So defensive line here, that is your, um, first team, um, uh, Benton over at Wisconsin, uh, Zach Harrison, Ohio State, PJ, PJ uh, Mustafer Must- over at Penn, Penn State, and uh, Mathis from Nebraska. Um, from an Ohio State perspective, you're not going to get Sawyer or JTT in the first team. They've not played enough. Uh, JTT does make the second team defensive line. Um, again, same thing with a lot of the young defensive tackles. They're great, but they haven't started enough. You, they're not going to make this team yet. Um, could they be on the team at the end of the year? Yes. Um, and to all of the Ohio State fans right now who are like, yeah, I, 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 Zach Harrison, uh, is that man, let, let, let him, let him go in this defense. A lot of y'all have given up on Zach Harrison and you're wrong. A lot of you have given up on, I'm going to throw Julian Fleming into this conversation as well. A lot of you have given up on Julian Fleming. A lot of you have given up on Zach Harrison and everyone's like, Hey Jared, who's your big 10 or who's your Ohio state? Like who's going to surprise you? Who's going to surprise people this year? Who's going to surprise people this year? Who's, who's going to bust out. And you guys want me to say freshmen. You guys want me to say sophomores. No, it's it's the older guys who you've given up on because you like the new shiny that's, freshman. That's, that's what Day it's said. It's Julian that's Fleming they, and it's Zach Harrison. Yeah, that's what Day said too. And is um either one of the pressers, uh, he said that he really likes Fleming uh, this year. If uh, Fleming's had a tremendous uh, off season and thinks he'll be a big contributor this year, and hopefully. I'll just plug plug his name in here because I, I really want to see him do well. Yeah. Um said it said down here on um, Bab down here too. I, I really hope that he he has a healthy season and can actually contribute. I, I really, really do. You 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 feel for the kid having that many yeah. injuries. You, you you want to see him have a a good season. I I agree. Um I I personally just don't see it happening. Um, I want it to happen. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. Um, linebackers, right, uh, not an Ohio uh, State guy, first or second team, which is fair and expected at this point. Um, I think that Ohio State has tremendous talent at linebacker. 
Um, I think that they've been improperly coached both from a position standpoint and from a schematic standpoint. Um, there's talent there. Us. They will take leaps and bounds this year. Um, I think when it's all said and done, there will be at least one uh, second team linebacker from Ohio State. I, I would say so. Um, at least one. Jack Campbell, Garrett Nelson, uh, Nick Herbig from Wisconsin, um, uh, Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, respectively. Um, I don't disagree with any any of that. Um, if, if anything, like I kind of want Seth Benson from Iowa in the in the first team, but I don't necessarily know who to kick out to put him in. Um, but I really like Seth Benson from I, I, the Iowa's defense. I think is going to be tremendous this year. Um, I I was the best team in the Big Ten West, but I I I I want I want to say this again. I said it. I said it. I'm going to say it again. I was the best team in the Big Ten West this year. I but their schedule is so much tougher than Wisconsin. I don't know if that actually translates into going to the Big Ten championship game. Yep. All right, and then the defensive backs. Here. I have issues. Yep. All right. To start off here, <laughs> Riley Moss from Iowa, uh, Jair Brown from Penn State, uh, Taiwan Mullen from Indiana, and Denzel Burke from Ohio State. Denzel Burke's the best cornerback in the entire Big Ten period. Why is he fourth on this list? Yep. Ronnie Hickman, I, by I, the way, doesn't show up until the last guy in the second team. Of I, and again, I have issues. I do too. I and, 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 do and too. since no. I'm since I'm airing my grievances, and from a non-Ohio State perspective, Joey Porter Jr. at Penn State deserves to be in the first team. I I was about to say that I can't agree with Jair Brown, uh, being the first te first uh first team there. I think I think really what it should be it should be Burke, Jair Brown, Joey Porter, and. Maybe Ronnie you could have Hickman. an argument with with Ronnie Hickman there. Maybe maybe that last spot might be Riley Moss over Iowa, but yeah, you, you should have two Penn State and potentially two Ohio State in that first team there. Four best defensive backs in the Big Ten: Burke, and, and no 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 particular order. I'm not interested in doing an order. Burke Hickman, Porter Brown. I I will go to my grave on that one. I'll die on that hill. The grave right. is at the top of the hill. Bury me in it, because that's where I'm going to die on top of that hill. Yep. Unit ranks. Let's. Uh, should we do mm -hmm. unit ranks or should we move to the ask Sloopcast questions? How many questions let's, do we have? Let's move on to the Sloopcast questions so, uh, okay. for the unit ranks. The worst. The worst Ohio State did, <laughs> and I'm surprised that they they have Ohio State third best linebacking group in the big 10, but yet not having a single name in their linebackers for first or second team. That's because Iowa took up all the spots. And by the way, they should, uh, Iowa number one in the linebackers. Um, and, and, and they should, by the way, like everyone's a little bit worried about Ohio state's offensive line this year. And for good reason, especially a depth standpoint, I like Ohio state starting five. I get a little bit worried. Like they might have six get below seven. I get real worried. Um, Still the second best team, best, best uh, offensive line team in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah, it's funny looking looking at Iowa here. Offensively, quarterback twelve, running back ten, wide receiver, tight end seven, and it's because of the tight end that's why it's so high. Uh, An offensive line eight, but then you look at their defense, defensive line one, linebackers one, defensive backs three. You're going to see a lot of low scoring games Ohio, in Iowa. Ohio <laughs> State. Poor offense, poor offense from Iowa and, and it's going to be tough sledding to score against Iowa. So you're going to see combined game, whatever the over under is Go under. for Iowa games, take the under. Go under. <laughs> I was, I was going to be playing some hardcore trestle ball this year. Hardcore trestle yes, ball. Yes, they are. They are. All right, question, Jared. Ask Sloop cast questions here. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks, how improved will the Sparties secondary be? To be determined. I mean, I, I yeah, really, I, I really know. like. Um, I mean, they, they. 
I really like uh, Henderson from their defensive backs. I, I really like Cal Halliday. I know you're talking about the secondary, but Cal Halliday is a really, really good linebacker for Michigan State that will be um, playing a big part of how well Sparty will be playing defensively, but how improved will Sparty secondary be? Maybe better, <laughs> maybe better, but um, and Henderson's got to got to really lead the team in that secondary group. I agree. Uh, also, just is Nebraska- uh, I agree with a with a slight salting of I don't know because I just I M- Michigan State's so hard to so hard. Um, Zach also asked, is Nebraska finally going to fire Scott Frost after um, after yet? I'm going to mean like yeah, after yeah. this year. Uh, we, I think um, we answered that question earlier. Yep. Um, so rewind and listen to us talking about Frost on the hot seat again, which right. again does is it, a phrase it, that will never not be funny to me. This is, this is your favorite uh, question here, Jared. You ready? Are you ready okay. for your favorite question? I don't know what you're going to say, is, but please. Is this the year Ryan Day uh-huh. moves off, moves off third base and takes the Buckeyes to the promised land? Okay, 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 okay. I, I've never said this on the podcast. I'm going to say it right now because fucking dipshit up north was like, oh no, I don't, I don't hate Ryan. Uh, you know, da, 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 da. then someone like followed that up with, okay, but was the was the born on third base thing about? And he said no comment. I've never said this on the podcast before. I'm going to say it right now. Harbaugh is the son of a college football coach who was given every single advantage in life. As far as his professional, professional football career, his college football career, his coaching career, the man was given every single advantage in life. He is walking privilege. Now compare that to Ryan day, whose childhood and the challenges that Ryan day faced in his childhood are well documented and we don't need to go back over them right now. We don't need to go over Ryan day's childhood again, but was a division two football player scrapped his way through Delaware and all sorts of smaller coaching jobs before working his way up to the NFL did it step by step earned his way up through the coaching ranks For Harbaugh to suggest that anybody else, especially Ryan Day, was born on third base is fucking criminal. And it's fucking deaf. I should have started with deaf and then escalated to criminal. If I could edit myself, I would, but I'm not gonna. Point to the, it's disgusting. It's honestly disgusting. If you know Ryan Day's past and you know Harbaugh's past, it's fucking, oh, 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 my defense is really bad, you guys. Why don't I call my brother who's an NFL head coach and have him loan me a defensive coordinator for a year? But Ryan Day's born on third base. But Ryan Day's the one that's born on third base. Go fuck, Harbaugh, seriously? Like, rivalry aside... Forget the rivalry, forget Ohio State, forget Michigan, forget everything. There is no bias coming from me whatsoever. This has nothing to do with the rivalry. This is just me saying this from the bottom of my soul. Jim Harbaugh, go fuck yourself. You good, Jared? Do you feel better? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Someone clip Uh, that. I, I wrote it down. (laughs) (laughs) i think this was asked already but it's always funny to ask this um to go through this question again uh how many hot dogs will be stuffed in jimmy harv's pocket week one we can ask we can answer this question every single week as far as i'm concerned um first week um he's probably coming in a bit svelte he hasn't gained like his his uh his his winter weight yet his season weight yet so he's probably not or it's new or or it's new pants too and you gotta you gotta get those pants worn out a little bit. Mm, that's true. If they're new pants, that we're losing hot dog space. But yeah. if he's but if he's a little bit skinnier because you know we're still coming off of summer, 
Uh, we haven't hit like weight gaining season yet. That would increase the amount of space in his pockets. Um, if the hot dogs have to remain intact, I'm saying four per pocket. Four per front pocket, say, uh, two in the backs. Mm. Mm. So, so, so you're saying there's there? He's got a dozen. He's got a dozen in there. Assuming he has four pockets, is it a? I don't think it's. I don't think it's below him to show up to a game in cargo khakis. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, ooh, I made this really small. Uh, does does the West have a single leader this year, or is or will it be a flip coin flip? Uh, I think I think it's a coin flip. We 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 talked about that already. Yeah. I think I think it's it's Iowa, Wisconsin, and then it's a huge gap with everybody else. I, I, I well, schedules considered, I like Minnesota in that in that top three. Again, not 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 based purely on talent, but with a whole schedule and everything considered. Uh, by the way, uh, Gangland says. Do you cut up the hot dogs to fit more? You could, but I, I specifically put the caveat of hot dogs intact. Over under two, Jared. Got got an over under here. Two. I think it should be 2.5. Uh, Jimmy Harbs. Let's say 2.5. Finger, it, Jimmy Harbs finger to the nose on camera this year. Ooh, hot picking his nose on camera. 2.5. Um... What's the farmer's almanac say? How many, how many indoor games? <laughs> Don't look that up. Don't. Um, none I'm, because he, none because he's not going to go to um, Indianapolis. So none. Ooh, burn. Um, I'm going to go under. All right. Yeah. I, I, I think under that's, that's a good, that's a good number. It's Zach, a good number. Right? I think I'll it's exact. I think it's two. My predictions too. Big Ten, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Z Spikes asked, "Who will be the Big Ten Coach of the Year?" Uh, Scott Frost. If it, listen, if the if the Big Ten, if the Pick Six preview guys, if their Big Ten predictions correct, which I don't think it is, but if it's correct, if he goes from three and nine to second place in the Big Ten West, that's Coach of the Year material right there. I, don't, I've, My, I, I, I feel like or. Feel like, if if Iowa gets their way, I think I think it's going to be Kirk's going to add another one to his. That's just the default answer. Uh, who gets it this year? I don't know. No one. No one. Ah, uh, fuck it. Give it to Kirk. <laughs> Give it to Kirk. Um, if my predictions are correct, and not Pick Six previews predictions are correct, maybe Greg Schiano. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, over under three, all Big Ten first team Buckeye snubs. Snubs. That that's objective, uh, but but under or excuse me, over over over. over. Go, well, well, whose season will Purdue ruin? Ooh, that's a good question. Who who does Purdue play this year? You need the who does who the Purdue do Purdue schedule on that one? All right, so they start the season off with Penn State. They okay. Post night game. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where? Where and when? Where and when for Penn State? In Purdue. Uh huh. Night game. Oh shit. Fox. We're done. There it is. <laughs> it Season opener. It, night game on the road. There. There it is. There. Penn State start no and one. They're fucked. But they're still the second best team in the Big Ten East. <laughs> That that might that might be it because looking at the rest of them here, at Minnesota, at Maryland, home Nebraska, at Wisconsin, home to Iowa, at Illinois, home North Northwestern, at Indiana. Uh, Iowa. Yeah, they, they, they 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 had a hmm. Iowa. Yeah, it's could be Iowa. Hmm. Could be could Nebraska. Be Iowa, I, I I agree. I think I think it's it's setting up. I think it's setting up for the the first game. Yeah, it feels that feels right. Uh, Nomad says Purdue or Wisconsin for the Big Ten West representative. Uh, not Purdue. Yeah, I think Wisconsin. you're thinking of Iowa. No, I think he's you're not. thinking he's... of Iowa. 
I think he's I think he's trolling. <laughs> This is this is like this is like Buckeye Zach always claiming that Rutgers is going to win the Big Ten East. He's, this is just <laughs> his joke. Uh, let's see here. Which head coach gets fired by week seven? None. God, Frost. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> Bert. <laughs> no, he's year one. Not he's Bert. not getting fired. Uh, I, it's. I don't see anybody. Is he year I, two? I, I God, think... that that first year went by real quick. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> Iowa's irrelevant. Seriously, is it year two? <laughs> wow. Uh, which head coach stays on the hot seat all season long? It's Scott Frost. Scott Frost is on the I hot seat. I remember them losing year. to Penn State. I don't remember Burt being the coach. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle, what was the question? Head coach that stays on the hot seat all, all season long. I think the default answer yes. to that is Scott Frost. Yeah, it's Scott but Frost. if if Penn State doesn't have the season that they would like to have, do you think Franklin might be on the hot seat? But, but the but road to finishing second in the Big Ten East is wide open. Okay, Which, I, to, but State, but to, hold on. Look at, looking at Penn State's schedule, and I think we discussed about this too, they could easily be going into October two and two. They'd be going I, into October two and two, and then getting out of October, they could still be five hundred. They could be, um, they could be what is that? Uh, four and four going into November. And if that's the case, he's on the hot seat. If if they're honestly four and four going into November, he's on the yeah. That's. Absolutely. That's failure. Uh, Gangland asks the important question here. What defines success for Penn State? This year, and again, asterisk, this year, second in the Big Ten East. I, I think, again, the road to the Big Ten East second place is wide open. And I think that that's an acceptable season for them. They they're not on the same level as Ohio State. Could they beat Ohio State the one Saturday that they're on the field with Ohio State? Yeah, it's possible. Especially since it's you know in Happy Valley. Yeah, it's possible. I I you know it's not Ohio State's going to win that game a hundred percent. Penn State can absolutely win that game. But as a program, they're just nowhere near Ohio State right now. This year specifically, they're nowhere near Ohio State right now. Uh. Second in the Big Ten East is success for them, realistically. And I get that yep. no one's going to say that out loud at Penn State. Everyone at Penn State is going to say, win the Big Ten. and Because that's what you should say. That's what you should say. If you're James Franklin, if that that's, should be your expectation. Realistically, though, second in the Big Ten East is the goal. Yep. All right. Uh, last question we have here from Buckeyes Zach. Games... Three and, a, three and a half is the over under. Three okay. and a half. Games Illinois and Northwestern win combined. Well, there's going to be at least one. Yeah, there's they play one. each other. <laughs> there's one. Okay, so one's given. Three and a half? It's over. It's over. Yeah. With one given. Kyle, what, now, if, we take, now, what now. if we take the given away? Okay. All right, so Illinois... In Illinois plays uh, just uh, Z Spikes just asks, before, asks before, an before, important before. question: Big Ten wins or any wins? According to Zach here, he didn't specify it was Big Ten wins. See, they I, I think they can get that. They can get that. Even if you take even if you take away even if you null the game where they play each other, they can get that. Now. If we don't null the 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 matchup and we say Big Ten games, what does that do? So one's given, they need three more Big Ten wins. Is that achievable? Kyle's giving the, oh, I don't fucking think so face. <laughs> I don't think so. You look, you look at Illinois. Wow. Illinois cross game. Uh, I mean, Wisconsin's the worst, but uh, Illinois cross games is Michigan and Michigan State. 
and Northwestern's is Ohio State and Maryland. But I think Maryland's a much better team than Northwestern here, and I just don't see it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Northwestern I, plays Penn Is State Maryland a well. much better team than anybody in the Big Ten? Better. I didn't say better. I said much better. Northwestern. I don't know if that's true. I think that I they're a better true. team. I don't know if they're a much better team. Okay. And by the way, they both play Purdue. Like, they have that going for them. It depends right, on that, the day. That is all the qu- that's fair. That's all that's all the questions we have here for, for today. Jared, you got you got anything else before we wrap it up? No, sir. I was gonna ask see Kyle, that you messed up the rhythm at the end of the show. He, it's it's he, it's he, he my job. In... It's my job to ask you. It's my job, it's my job to plug things. Hey everyone, um our expenses for the show keep growing and you could support us for as little as $3 a month over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can join these hooligans uh, down. I can't, this is reversed. I can never do this down here. Kyle, hey Kyle, can you just point straight down for me? You're, no, uh, there, there you go. Down there in the discord chat. Um, you can uh, get access to the premium section of the discord server, early access to episodes. Um, during the season, we do social screens where we all watch a football game together. Sometimes it's Ohio State, sometimes it's not. Um, uh, at premium access to the Discord server, uh, including like a recruiting channel, the channel that the guys are talking in right now, and they're watching us record this right now. All of this digital access is available to you for $3 a month. Or also maybe just to give us a, just help 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 offset some of our expenses. If you like us, and you want us to keep going because like we're we're getting real close to doing four episodes a week and um, it's a lot. And we we could use some incentive. <laughs> um, and again, it's and you can pay for the entire year. Like, oh, Jared, I just I, I, I don't I just can't with another monthly bill. I just can't with another monthly bill, right? like inflation and everything. I just can't with the. 32, I think it's like 32, 32, 50. I forget the exact number. Um, it's like 12, 11, 12 percent off. Um, if you pay for the entire year up front, it's a it's about 32, 33 dollars. It's the look, look at Kyle's dog. Do you see how small Kyle's dog is? That dog needs food. Look how small he is. <laughs> He's obviously malnourished. I'm kidding, Kyle. He's obviously malnourished. Look how small he is. He needs food. We we need your help. Three dollars a month to buy dog food for Kyle's dog. Three dollars buys you more content than anywhere else. Uh, per per the dollar at least. Per the dollar, absolutely. I don't I don't know about. More content than anywhere, but more content than anywhere for three dollars, absolutely. Um, so yeah, patreon.theslipcast.com. Um, again, that gives you premium access to our Discord server with all the things I already said. But there is a free access that you can anyone can join the Discord server right now. You don't need to pay us anything. Literally, anyone can join the Discord server right now. It's free. Uh, the Discord app is free. Access to the server is free. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Download the app or just access us uh, via so on on a web browser on your computer uh, on via an app on your phone. It's all completely free. Most of our channels, most of our activity takes place in the free sections of the server. So come join our Discord server. Um, and if you like it and you want a little bit more and you want to join the hooligans, the, the sloop cats down there in the chat, it's, it's seriously like $32 a year, 32 50, something like that. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? See that this is the part where you, you, you do the thing where it's <laughs> like, is there anything else? Gotcha. I'm, I'm new to this Jerry. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to understand. We've only stuff. been doing this for seven years, Kyle. <laughs> uh no not i i kind of used up my my spiel in the fir- first episode i don't got anything between our first recording and, and this one here so, uh, so can, can i take uh, over kyle's corner i'm 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 
I'm glad I didn't go to the uh, the cruise Charlotte game because that game yeah. ended up not playing. <laughs> I'd be Lightning, there stuck right? in the rain and thunderstorms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to steal Kyle's corner. Uh, hey, everyone, go join Buckeye Huddle. All of the people who uh, worked at Buckeye Scoop who weren't assholes are now at Buckeye Huddle. So um, it's current. Last I checked, it's currently free. It's going to become a premium site, but they're doing like a, you know, just sort of an open house, I guess. Um, for, for a little bit, uh, that's where Tony is. That's where Tom is. That's where Alex is. Um, that's where Ross is. All, all the people from Buckeye scoop who weren't fucking assholes are now over at Buckeye huddle. So, uh, go, go, go to Buckeye huddle, but they, they won't say that Tony and Tom are too classy and too professional to say that. I'll fucking say it. Everyone who isn't the complete asshole who worked at Buckeye scoop is now at Buckeye huddle. So everyone go join Buckeye Huddle. Uh, it's like I said, it's currently free. Uh, they'll they'll end up uh, charging some sort of something for the premium content eventually. Um, whatever it is, it's, it's probably not enough money because those guys over there are fantastic. So Kyle, there there are still I still Kyle's corner. But by the way, Thank don't you. give them money unless you gave us money first. <laughs> give us money first, <laughs> then give them money. Then give them money. All right. And there there goes the dog. See, Kyle? Gu guys, see? The dog has to go sleep now because he's malnourished. <laughs> Kyle, do you hate All that right. joke? Yeah, let's, let's end the episode. <laughs> okay. Tonight's ending uh, band, just like on the Monday episode, is the Soul Monsters. Um, if you're new to, new to the podcast... The actual podcast people get the get the music at the end. YouTube doesn't get the song at the end, but there is a link down in the show description. Uh, so you can go listen to the song if you want. So you can you can go listen to the song if you want on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio version, the actual podcast version of this. Just do nothing. Literally just do nothing. And the song is going to start playing soon. So once again, uh, this is the Soul Monsters. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, Soul Monsters. <laughs>